Hi, I'm Di Morrissey and I'm here to talk about my favourite books, special books. The first book I remember really, really well. My mother started to read to me a chapter every night and then when I can read, I wanted to read it every night too. And I did terrible things to it. I coloured it in really badly. It's Marmaduke the Possum by Pixie O'Harris. Love Pixie O'Harris. In fact, our local hospital just found a whole bunch of her paintings buried somewhere. So we have them on the wall, which is wonderful. Um, but so here's my writing, bad writing. And then this was given to me by my grandparents. And then many years later, when I was a reporter, I went and I interviewed Pixie O'Harris, and I was so embarrassed to take this book into her. And she looked at it and she said, oh darling, this is a well-loved book. And she signed it for me. So this book is very, very special. It's been read to all my grandchildren. Um, so that's, that's my childhood book. Then as I got a bit older, um, I had a lot of uh, uh, young uncles and I had their books, you know, the Biggles books and the William books. But then I discovered Anne of Green Gables and the Emily books. So I found, you know, girly books. And then, actually, when I was seven, um, there was a witch that lived down the end of Lovett Bay in Pittwater where, where I lived. Well, I was told she was a witch, but she was um, a, a lovely, gracious lady. And she caught me in her garden one day poking around and she asked me inside to have some uh, tea and biscuits. And uh, um, I, she said, what were you doing out there? And I said, oh, I was looking around for fairies because, um, you know, I make up stories and I love fairies. And she said, oh, and she showed me her library. Abs, I've never seen so many books in my life. And she said, um, I write poetry. And I went, oh, that's very good. I know a lot of poetry. And thank goodness I didn't recite the rude limerick that Chips Rafferty had taught me. I did um, cross the stony ridges, across the rolling plain, young Harry Dale the drover came around riding home again. And I said that I loved books. I'd never seen so many books. And, she, and so I ran out of books. I only got a book at Christmas and birthdays, all we could afford. So this lady called Dorothea McKellar said, um, you must put your stories down in a book one day for other people to enjoy. So at age seven, I went, oh, what a good idea, I'll write books. And it took me many years later, but I've always treasured the book she gave me, which was her book of poetry, The Wide Brown Land, and Aren't We in Droughts and No Flooding Rains. And I think it was Dorothea that really inspired me to appreciate the environment and the land around us. I lived in a very, you know, bushy area, grew up in the, in the, in the country. So more recently, I think the most powerful and important books are books like Bruce Pascoe's Dark Emu, uh, Billy Griffith's Deep Dreaming, and also Charles Massey's um, Song of the Reed Warbler. We have to look after country in a very different way. And now we're learning that the indigenous um, people of our First Nation knew exactly how to look after the land. And we have a lot of lessons to learn because we are in bad trouble in our country at the moment. And we have to, I think, go back to those old ways. Um, and I suppose if I travel, the one time I got on a plane in Los Angeles and I had uh, to come home to Sydney and I picked up a book and it was called Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And I got on the plane, I opened the book and I closed the last page in Sydney and I did not move. Loved it. There's nothing like a wonderful book on a plane. So books are treasures, they're gifts and they're very special and to be able to share a story with you is just the very best thing in the world.